to my white screen just a second. And all right, there we go. Okay, so um, this specifically is going to be um, section 7.1.R. And it is essentially all about what I'm going to call um, exponent rules. You could call it rules of exponents, um, anything like that. Um, what I'm going to do first is list a bunch of rules. Uh, well, I say a bunch. I think I've got four or five. And then we are going to try to um, apply those to some of the problems that we have. So the good news is um, a lot of these problems are going to be maybe a little bit shorter than some of the ones that you had been doing right before the midterm. So um, it may offer you just a little bit of a breather. They're not huge, like big, long, takes a whole page, multi-step problems. So that's kind of nice. So um, I'm just going to kind of label these. Um, I'm going to call them letters because I'll call them number. I'll do like problem numbers in just a second. So um, the yes, first one that I'm going to do is this. So in I don't know what I do with it. All right. So there we go. So there's the first one, and I'm sorry, this should be a times in here. I'm really bad at drawing multiplication symbols on my computer screen with my finger. Um, so x, That's okay. x to the a times x to the b is just x to the a b power. So what I need you to kind of realize out of this one is a couple of things. First of all, you can only... Um, do this if you have the same base. So to give you kind of an example, I'm going to do it over here. Like if I had two to the fifth times, let's say two to the sixth or something like that, I could only combine them since both of these are twos. Like if one would have been two to the fifth times three to the sixth, I really couldn't do that. And what we do is we keep the base the same. So you keep the two and then you just add up the numbers. So five plus six would be 11. Okay. All right. That one good? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now here's another one. It's pretty similar. Okay. But instead of multiplying, what we're going to do now is we're going to divide. So X to the A divided by X to the B. So instead of multiply, we divide. And then what we do here is we subtract. So X to the A minus B power. And on this one, you have to be careful because it's always the whatever's in the top of the fraction minus the power that's in the bottom of the fraction. So um, if you wanted to look at an example or something, I'm going to use X's again over here. But if I use like X to the fifth over X to the third, this would be X to the five minus three power, which would just be X squared. So the only thing you really have to be careful about this one is make sure you do the number that's on top minus the number that's on bottom. You can't flip it around the other way. Okay, and the numbers like the twos don't have to be the same on this one? Um, they do have to be the same. So like, let me do this right here. Like, let me get rid of my little X's, okay? And let's put numbers in. So like, this would have to be like three and three right here. And then that oh, would okay. have to be like, and then we'd have the same thing. So it does, it has to absolutely be the same. Now, what it doesn't have to be is it doesn't necessarily have to be a number. So like I had an X there. Now we could get really creative, okay? And kind of stupid and silly, but this may help you remember it, okay? Mm -hmm. It can be anything. Like I could have smiley face raised to the fifth power divided by smiley face raised to the third power. And those are the same thing. So that's going to be smiley face to the five minus three or smiley face squared. Okay. <laughs> oh, as long as it's the same. <laughs> I know it's kind of stupid, but hey, you might remember it. <laughs> so and I, for me. I can't draw. It's really bad, y'all. All right. <laughs> Um, okay, so it's let's probably go. hard to draw with your finger. 
you know, and I tried, I have this stylus, but it hangs. Like I can't write with it because it's just not smooth. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, Oh, I need to be born later, I think. I don't know. All right. Okay, this one's real easy. You're going to like this one. Okay, so X to the A power, but then in parentheses and on the outside, you have another exponent. So it's like you have two exponents on top of each other, really. Um, mm -hmm. And what you do there is you just multiply those. That's A times B. And okay. so um, let me give you an example of that one. And then we're going to put all of these in problems. But if you want an example, um, I'm going to use a different variable. I'm just going to use Z squared and then to the fifth. And so that would just be Z to the tenth because you would just multiply two times five. Okay. So that one's not too bad. We kind of like that one. Um, yeah. I personally think that one's the easiest, but, you know. Um, and I apologize. I have to have the volume on, but my email dings. So if you are hearing that ding over there on the other end, that tells you that I get way too many emails. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I'm trying to keep the mic on so I can talk to you. So if you hear my puppy whining, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've only well, had her for about three days, so she's very clingy towards me. Really? Oh, that's fun. Yes. Fun. I'm she sits right end. next to me. <laughs> I'm on the other end. My dog is like 15 and is really old. So all he does is just like lay at my feet and look at me. Like, really? I, I don't want to go anywhere. Just let me lay here. So. Yes. She's eight weeks and that's literally what she's doing right now is sitting beside <laughs> me because I, if I put her down, she whines. Oh, well, that's okay. I mean, I, I mean, keep her by all means. But if she whines, I'm not really, you know, I, I, <laughs> okay. it, me <laughs> I've been doing this a long time if that tells you anything man I can do anything so um I'm just glad that none of them are actually home tonight so that means that that I will not have any kind of screaming children run through my home so <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> Okay, so this one um, is x to the negative n, and this is actually the last like property that we're going to do, and then we're just going to do a bunch of problems. Um, so this one, okay. what makes this one different is this. This exponent is negative, and that's weird, and it's actually not allowed in math. You can't have a final answer that has a negative exponent in it. And so you have to know how to deal with that or simplify it. And what you do is you put it in the denominator. So we make it one over X, but to the positive N power. Okay. So like to give you an example, let's say I had Y to the negative fourth. Oh, we got Shane coming in. That would be one over Y to the positive fourth. And then I'm actually, it's important enough that I'm going to write here just so that you remember, never leave a negative exponent, so I'm going to abbreviate so I don't run off my screen, in an answer. So you can leave an exponent in an answer and that is perfectly fine. You just can't leave a negative exponent in an answer. So you would have to put that down in the denominator like we did on that property right there. Okay. Okay. All right. Good evening, Shane. Nice to at least sort of see the black box. It's kind of funny. All students always have their um, videos off. It's kind of funny. All right. So <laughs> let's... Um, Let's start on some problems. And um, there he is. He turned his video on for me. At least I'm not staring at a black box. <laughs> um, and then, um, so of course, if we, if I confuse you or something like that, just be sure and let me know. So the instructions on all of these are just simply going to say simplify. So what our goal is really in this section is you are going to be working with exponents in chapter seven. And so in the 7.R.1, we're just trying to remind you of the rules so that if you need to combine them or do anything like that, then you're familiar with the rules before you actually get into some of the um, algebra problems that we're going to be dealing with. 
So I'm going to start off with um, the smaller ones, and then we'll get to some that are a little bit bigger in just a minute. So for this first one, we're going to have x to the sixth times x to the negative first. Now, this one really has two ways to deal with it, um, and I'm going to deal with it in what I think is going to be the easiest way for you. And so what I'm going to do is remind you of the rule. So I'm going to put the rule right down here, and Shane, I put this up a minute ago. Um, so if you want to go, kind of go back in a minute and you look at all of the rules, you're welcome to. But here is the rule that this one fits. So you have one base, x, I'm going to kind of underline it here. Remember, they have to be the same. And you're multiplying, and you've got two different exponents. But since you're multiplying, what you do is you keep that the same. So we're going to keep that x right there. And we're just going to add 6 plus negative 1. And then you're going to want to make sure that you simplify that. And so 6 plus negative 1 is 5. And so my answer would just be x to the fifth. All right, now let me stop there for a second. How's that? If you don't want to turn your mic on and you're good, that's OK. Everybody happy so far? Yeah? OK. All right, let's try another one. Let's try another one then. All right, let's see what we got here. So this one is going to be x to the sixth divided by x to the third. Now I'm going to come over here off to the side and I'm going to write the rule down, but I want you to realize for a second, it's not the same rule for problem two that it was for problem one. Because in problem one, you were multiplying those things and in problem two, you're dividing those things. So you got to make sure that you realize the rules are a little different. So I'm going to write the rule over here. The rule over here says x to the a power over x to the b power equals x to the a minus b power. So this is going to be x to the 6 minus 3. Remember, it always has to be the number that's on top minus the number that's on bottom. Remember, you can't flip them, and that is the most common thing that students do is they think that that's interchangeable. It always has to be the top number minus the bottom number. And so then you do have to simplify that. So 6 minus 3 is equal to 3. And so my answer is just x to the third. So what do we think so far? Good. That one, those are both fairly easy. Okay. All right. We're going to try um, another one or another probably two that you may think are fairly easy. And then we're going to get into some that may be um, like more multi-step maybe. And so um, the rules don't change. You may have to do more than one thing. Okay, um, so another one. Oop, that doesn't look like a nine, sorry. Okay, so this one's really similar to problem number two in the fact that it is um, division. And so you're gonna use that division rule. And so your base here is a seven. So this is going to be 7 to the 9 minus 7 power. And then 9 minus 7 is 2. But this one has one other thing about it. On that last problem, our base was a variable. And so we got to just leave it. On this problem, your base is a number. And if it's a number, they are going to expect you to actually evaluate it and tell them what that number is rather than just leaving it as something squared. And so remember to square something means to multiply it by itself, right? So we would have to go a step further and say, okay, seven squared means seven times seven. And so my final answer would be 49. 
So do you see the difference from problem two and problem three where you can leave one of them as an exponent and then this one right here, you're gonna have to actually evaluate it and give me the number there? Yes. Yes, okay. All right. Yeah. Um, okay, let's try another one. Um, all right, let's try this one. X to the negative sixth. Now remember, the kind of like cardinal rule with exponents is you are not allowed to have a negative exponent in your answer ever, ever. I don't, I don't care how far you go in math, it cannot happen. You cannot have a negative exponent in an answer. So the way that we deal with a negative exponent is we put it in the bottom of a fraction. You don't change the base and you don't change the number quantity. So like that was a six over there, it's gonna be a six here. The only thing that we do is when we put it in the denominator, it's no longer a negative six, it is now a positive, positive six and that's all you do. Okay. All right, what do we think? That one's easy. That one's easy too? Okay. All right. Well, then let's get into some that are um, more multi-step and let's kind of see what we can do with some that have um, kind of combinations of things in the same problem. Okay. All right. So... <clears throat> Let's look at 9x to the fourth divided by 3x. We'll just do 3x. That works. Okay. Now, what I want you to notice here is that you have two different things. And this is the first time I've really given you something with two different things. And so it's almost like you can create... Um, two little mini problems. So since I have the nice little beauty of colors here, I wanna do this for a second. I'm gonna kind of bracket these off. You can look at kind of the numbers. So I kind of bracketed them in blue, like one number divided by the other number. And then you can look at the variables divide kind of each other. So one problem and another problem. So look at the numbers only. You have nine divided by three. Well, what is nine divided by three gonna be? Three. Three, there you go. So the number part is gonna give me three. And then you need to look at the exponents. Well, you notice you have an X on top and an X on bottom. And so this goes back to the rule where we're gonna subtract. So it would be four minus but now I picked this for a reason. I like this one. You'll notice this X down here in the denominator doesn't have an exponent. If it doesn't have an exponent, you need to remember it's an understood one. So that's four minus one. And what is four minus one going to be? Three. Three, there you go. And so that's gonna be three X to the third. Now for just a second, and if you don't want to write this down, you really don't have to, but I want to show you one other thing, just kind of um, like as a different, I don't know, kind of as a different way to kind of prove that this rule works. If we looked at this problem again, and I just looked at not the number part, but if I just looked at X to the fourth over X, remember what X to the fourth really means? It means that you multiply X four times. So you have four X's essentially X times X times X times X. And then if you're dividing it by X down here, you would have one pair of those cancel. And then you would only be left with one, two, three X's. And that's why this ends up being X to the third over here. So that's the reason that the rule works basically. All right, let's try another one let's get back to our color here okay. um okay let's try this one how about y over x squared and then this one's going to be confusing to the seventh so this one is another thing that is two parts 
So the first thing that I want to remind you of is if you look at that Y in there, it doesn't have an exponent. And so it would be an understood one. So if you want to write that understood one in there, you are welcome to. If you don't, because you just remember that, well, okay, be my guest. Just remember that and it works for me. Okay. Now what you have to remember is that this exponent right here, the seven actually goes with both of these pieces. The reason it goes with both is because it's on the outside of the parentheses. And so when you have an exponent on top of an exponent, and it's been a few minutes since we wrote the rule down, so I'm gonna write the rule over here again, x to the a and then raised to the b power means we multiply those two things together. So that would be x to the a times b power. So then it's gonna be the same thing over here. We're just gonna to have to make sure that that seven goes with both the y and the x. So that's gonna be y to the one times seven power, and we'll simplify that in a second, over x to the two times seven power. So then what is that gonna give me for a final answer right there? Y to the seventh over X to the 14th. That's it, we got it. Now the most common thing that people mess up on this one is they'll forget that the seven goes in the goes with the bottom two. So it's pretty common. Like if I'm teaching this in a class and I'm walking around, um, I'll get something like y to the seventh over x squared. People will forget that that exponent goes with both of them when it's on the outside of the parentheses, and that's really a pretty easy thing to forget. So um, you know, if you do it, don't beat yourself up over it too much. But that's kind of the catch. So if you miss one like that, you might just look back to make sure that you did put the exponent with both pieces. All right, let's see, let's try a tricky one. There's not too many tricky ones on your homework, but I think personally, I think this one is one of them. So let's see what we can do. So how about negative five to the negative one power? Now, I think this one's tough. The reason I think it's tough is because you've got too many negatives running around and people tend to flip out over two things. One is negative, one is fractions. And unfortunately this problem has them both. So that's why people get a little antsy all the time. I tell my students often that um, I think mm, fraction is the math F word. Everybody gets real antsy when they see that word and they think it's synonymous with a cuss word. So what you wanna do is remember a couple of things. The negatives don't cancel. You are not multiplying. So you cannot just look at this and go, woohoo, two negatives, I'm done. No, you're not. Sorry, it'd be nice if it was that easy. What you have to remember is that you deal with exponents first. So you have to deal with this little guy first. And remember the only rule that you have, and I'm gonna write it off down here for a second, is if you have something to a negative power, that becomes one over that thing to the positive, whatever that number is, power. So in this case, we have negative five to the negative one. So that's gonna become one over negative five to the positive one power. So all I did there, I didn't deal with the negative five or anything like that yet. All I did there was deal with the fact that that was a negative one exponent. So when you put it in the bottom, it becomes a positive one. Now what you have to remember is this. Anything to the first power is just itself. So this is just one over negative five. What do you think about that one? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, let's try something that's kind of similar. Let's see what we can do. Um, I'm not gonna have as many negatives this time. Um, Let's try three to the um, negative fourth power and let's see what we can do with that. So if I've got three to the negative fourth, 
the first thing that you want to deal with is that negative exponent. So remember that becomes one over what? Three. To the fourth. Fourth, there you go. All right. Now remember, this is a number. It's not a variable or anything like that. And so if you've got nothing but numbers, they're going to expect that you figure out what this is. Now, if you want to, you could grab a calculator. The problem with grabbing a calculator is it's going to give you a decimal number and Hawks is going to want this in a fractional form. And so we're going to actually do the math here. It's not as bad as you think, I promise. Remember what three to the fourth really means. It means three times three times three times three. Basically, you've got how many threes down here? Four of them, okay? So then you don't even really have to do math with this fraction, the top is a one. And then if you want to, you can come in here and say, okay, three times three is nine, times another three is 27, times another three is 81. Or even if you don't want to do that, you can just grab your calculator and say, okay, what is three to the fourth? But you're going to want to input that answer as one over 81, not whatever one over 81 is equal to in your calculator. You're going to want to leave it as a fraction. Still pretty good? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Let's try one more like that and then we'll go to... Um, Maybe something just a little bit different. So on these problems, most of them are pretty straightforward. You will have a few where some things don't have exponents. And so I wanna do one like that here. So this is gonna be two times three to the negative second. So you'll notice that two doesn't have an exponent. And so if you are just really kind of, you know, exponent focused and you want to remind yourself, you could put the fact that that was a pretend one or not a pretend one, it is an understood one, but you don't really need to do that. That's not required. Two, two to the first, just two, whatever. What you wanna do here is you wanna deal with this piece. So for a second, I'm just gonna bring that two down. We're not gonna deal with it anymore. We wanna deal with the thing that has the negative exponent in it first. By the way, JC, that puppy is really cute. <laughs> um, <Thanks for> <laughs> she's trying to tear up my bags. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Puppies will do that, they'll tear up everything. All right, yeah. so <laughs> we've got one over what? Uh, three. Three to the second. Second, there we go. All right, so we got one over three to the second. And then once again, these are all numbers. And so Hawks and I are gonna expect that you come up with kind of a singular answer, not this times this and not some ugly whatever. So we're gonna once again, bring down the two. First thing we wanna do, oh dear, that really looks bad. Let me fix that multiplication. Um, first thing we wanna do is figure out what this is. Well, now three squared is nine. Remember, it's three times three, not three times two. That's the easiest mistake in the world. I have a daughter that makes that mistake all the time, y'all. That's like her signature error right there, okay? So um, three times three, so we get two times one over nine. And once again, you can still combine this. So you can't leave this alone. So to remind you, remember two is two over one. And so to multiply fractions, all you do is you multiply straight across. So two times one is two, one times nine is nine. And so my final answer for this would be two over nine. And remember, this is the way that Hawks is gonna expect that you give them the answer. They're not gonna want you to grab your calculator and say, okay, two divided by nine equals and write in some ugly decimal. They're gonna want you to leave it as a fraction right here. All right, let's try, um, Let's try a pretty tricky one. Actually, we're gonna try a couple of pretty tricky ones. So let's try this. So problem 10, we are gonna try um, four X to the fifth over Y, all of that squared. Now, I know y'all are thinking this looks really, really ugly. 
And it really kind of, I mean, it probably is the worst looking problem of the night, but it's not as bad as I want you to make it out to be. It just, you just have to remember a couple of things. So first of all, you'll notice that two that I have in there is on the outside of the parentheses, right? So you have to remember anything that's on the outside of the parentheses has to distribute. So this exponent of a two is gonna have to go with the four. It's also gonna have to go with that X to the fifth and it's also gonna have to go with that Y down there. So your two, since it's on the outside, don't just pick and choose one thing or two things for it to go with. It's gotta go to everything, even the number. And that's what most people forget. A lot of times people won't put it with the number. So if you really wanna think about this rule wise, this becomes four to the second because the two has to go with it. And then what would X be? What am I gonna do with that five and that two? Was it adding them? No, multiplying. It's multiplying them. And remember the reason it's multiplying, I'm gonna just write it down here real quick, is because it's one exponent on top of the other. And so that means that you are gonna multiply those things. And so this is gonna be X to the 10th. And then really you're multiplying down here as well. I want you to realize that because this is an understood one right here because Y didn't have an exponent. And so when I do that, two times one gives me Y to the second. Unfortunately, you're not done. So look at that problem. What do you think I can fix that makes this, that might make this look a little better? the x over the y okay well let's think about that okay we've got an x on top and a y in this in the bottom do you think that those two are going to cancel out or anything like that no no you're right well, now, you're right the reason they're not going to cancel is because they're two different variables if that would have been an X on the top and an X in the bottom, we could have canceled. But since they're two different variables, they can't. So I can't cancel any X to the tens with any Y to the second or anything like that. I can't do that. Look at this four up here. What do we think we might be able to do with that? What is four squared? What does it mean? Isn't it 16? It is. And so instead of leaving an answer like four squared, we are going to have to turn that into the number that it is. And so we're going to have to say, okay, that is 16. And then don't forget, we have the rest of the problem, X to the 10th over Y to the second. So that's a really easy thing to forget. People forget that they need to change that four squared into the actual number that it is. And so it's really common even for you to, you know, kind of like do the math right, but you just leave out that final answer. And so Hawk still counts it wrong, which makes everybody mad. And I understand that, but you know, it's just one of those um, kind of tricky things there. All right, let's try this one. Let's see what we can do with this one. How about five, x to the negative six squared. Now this is one guys, you can do it two different ways and it really doesn't make a difference. So I'm gonna ask y'all, what do you think you might wanna deal with first? Do you wanna deal with the negative six first or do you wanna deal with that outside two first? And it doesn't matter, just pick one. The outside two. Outside two, okay. If we're gonna deal with that outside two, remember it's on the outside. And what that means is that it's gonna have to go with both everything. pieces. There you go, everything. Not just the negative six there, it's gonna have to go with the five also. And remember, if you want to remind yourself, anything that doesn't have an exponent has an understood one. Mm -hmm. And so this is gonna be this rule down here where we're gonna be multiplying. All right, so let's think about this. So this is gonna be five to the what power? What am I gonna do? The second. All right, yeah, because it's one times two. So five to the second. And then we have X to the what? 
Negative 12. Negative 12. There you go. Okay. And the reason we have negative 12 is because you multiplied a negative 6 times a positive 2. All right, now that's great, but on this problem, there are actually two more things that you can do, not just one. So the first thing that I look at is I look over here and I can say, okay, the first thing I have is five to the second. Well, five to the second is a number, but what number is it? What does five to the second really mean? 25. 25, okay, because it's five times five, so that really is 25. So when you've got a number like that, you've got to actually evaluate it. You can't just leave it. And then when we look at the second piece, x to the negative 12, we have a problem there because remember kind of your rule is you cannot ever have a negative exponent in your answer, ever, can't do it. So I'm gonna make this a little multiplication symbol just to remind you all that we're multiplying. And what can I change x to the negative 12th into? One over 12. One over, be careful. Whatever to the 12th. Here we go. All right. Now you're almost done, but not quite. <laughs> so you have two different things. You have like 25 times one over X to the 12. And so remember, you actually do have to multiply those two things and get one thing. So just as a reminder, 25 is 25 over one. And then when you multiply, there's no need for common denominators or anything like that. So 25 times one is 25. And then in the bottom, I get X to the 12th. All right, what do we think about that one? It seemed like a lot, but it really wasn't. <laughs> All right, Shane, what do you think? It seemed like it was going to be more, but. I, I think and I hope, I, I hope, I, I kind of hate to say this because I'm afraid I'm going to jinx myself or jinx y'all or something. <laughs> um, I, I think this is going to be um, a homework set that may be a little bit of a reprieve after, you know, working your brain so hard for the midterm or whatever. Now, um, the rest of chapter seven, I don't think so much. That's not necessarily the case. But this particular one really all boils down to just these few rules and um, making sure you don't make any silly little arithmetic mistakes or anything like that. You know, like saying five squared is 10 or something. I mean, that's easy to do. We do it a lot. But um, other than those, this really, this is pretty much it. Um, in fact, I only have one more problem for you um, picked out tonight. So let's look at this one. And the only reason I picked this one even is because people tend to, to make a negative sign mistake in this. I don't think that your mistake is gonna come from the exponent. I think it comes from positive and negative numbers, really. So don't read into this any more than um, like, don't think, oh my gosh, it's the last problem. It's got to be horrible. There's got to be some like mind blowing trick. Uh, I'm, I, there really isn't. I just wanted to remind you of this because when I was looking through um, the problems that Hawks can randomly generate, sometimes they have negative numbers, sometimes they have positive numbers. And I just wanted to remind you of the negatives here. So um, what does it mean to raise a number to the third power? Uh, it's self times three times. There you go. So this is negative two times negative two times negative two, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you do the first two to kind of just do a piece at a time, negative two times negative two is positive four. Mm -hmm. And then positive four times negative two is Negative eight. Negative eight, yeah. The most common wrong answer I get to something like that is um, people will give me positive eight because they forget about the negatives or something like that. They just kind of think that when you've got an exponent, they go away and they don't. Mm -hmm. And so be careful. But now if we would have had something like, and I'm just gonna do it off to the side in a different color real quickly. If I would have had something like negative two squared now that would have been negative two times negative two, and that would have been a positive four for an answer. So you can either get, depending on the exponent that we give you, you could get an answer that's positive or you could get an answer that's negative, either one. You just actually have to kind of work it out and pay attention to how many of them that there are. Yeah. All right. Okay, so what do you think? Do you have any questions at all? 
Can you put the rules up that I missed? Yes, you want me to write them up again real quick? You don't mind. I don't mind at all. Um, let me, now I'm gonna say this when I'm erasing this. Shane, this is not an exhaustive list. It's the ones that you're gonna need for this homework, okay? So I don't want you to think these are the only exponential rules that exist because they're not. So um, X to the A times X to the B is going to be X to the A plus B power. And what I'll do real quick, and JC, I'm so sorry, I don't remember the examples that I gave when I um, wrote them out for you. So if I actually use the same example, I'm gonna apologize in advance, okay? Um, okay. I'm gonna give you a, an example over here, Shane. If I have something like, um, um, oh, I still on my eraser, I'm sorry. X to the fourth, times x to the 10th over here, then that would be x to the 14th power. Now, one thing I do want to stress is these have to be the same. So in other words, and JC, I didn't write this down and I'm gonna um, erase it in just a second. If I had something like this, x to the fourth times y to the 10th, there's not a darn thing you can do with that because this and this are different. And so that's just it. You can't touch that. But if they're the same, then you can combine them into this one thing just by adding your exponents. All right, next rule, x to the a divided by x to the b is going to be x to the a minus b power. And so to give you an example of this one, if I had, let's say, y to the eighth over y to the fifth, that would end up being y to the third power because we would just subtract eight minus five. Um, okay, I think the next one that I gave you, I'm trying to go in the order that I gave them in the first spot is this. So this essentially means you only have one base, you only have one X, but you have like an exponent on top of each other. And that's the rule, we wrote it up just a second ago, but that's gonna be A times B. So if you had something that looked like X squared to the 10th, you would take those two things and multiply them and you would get X to the 20th. And then the only other one, and I'm gonna have to erase my top rule here because I'm really bad about writing too big on the screen. Um, so let me erase my X to the A plus B one up here, is the one that deals with negative exponents. And so it says this, if we have any thing, I'm gonna call it X to a negative exponent. So negative N, doesn't matter what it is that's gonna to change to be one over X to the positive N power. And so for an example, for this one, I could have um, A to the negative fifth would end up being one over A to the positive fifth. Okay, and then everything else that we did, if you'll notice, you may not just have to use one rule in a problem, you may end up using more than one or something like that. But essentially what we've got right now are a combination of those rules right there. And then remember, you cannot ever leave a negative exponent in an answer. You always have to, if you've got a negative exponent, you're going to have to create a fraction and put that in the denominator for yourself. Okay. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Do you have any other questions that I can answer? None for me. None for you? I don't have any. Okay. All right. Then um, I will let you go this evening, but I'm going to remind you both. Um, remember, this is due tomorrow. Um, of course, if you have any questions or anything while you're starting your homework, you know, feel free to reach out to myself or Miss Young. Give, send us an email. I don't know if you saw, but I actually have one of my children that's made the finals at Houston Livestock Show. And so I had to um, 
alter the um, my office hours tomorrow. So um, normally I'm there from 10 to 1230, but I'm only going to be there from 8 to 10 tomorrow. So but um, if you're going to call me, you need to call me early. I will check my email all day anyway. OK, so um, even when I'm not in my office, but I apologize for that. But I have to go help. She's only 12. She doesn't know how to do Zoom thing and she has to do like a Zoom final thing. So I have to go help with technology. So um, good luck with your homework. Um, reach out. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you've got any questions, okay? Yes, ma'am. Good luck to your daughter. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. You'll have a great night, okay? You too. Bye-bye, y'all. Bye. -bye,